let us celebrate this vicious woman as she marks her 60th birthday mrs ozo okafo she had been a strong supporter and promoter of Igbo songs and hymns through the melody beats this is one of our kind and we must celebrate her viewers and subscribers you're welcome back again on this platform where we tell you undiluted truth on 22nd of october being tuesday the um, supreme court reserved its um judgment on whether or not efcc should be scrapped as an unconstitutional government agency and here are the number of governors who penned down their signature to scrap efcc here is the list of states challenging the creation of efcc kogi state ondo state Edo State, Oyo Ogun, Nasarawa State, Kebi, Castina, Sokoto State, Jigawa, Enugu, Benue State, Anambra, Plateau, Cross River, and Niger State. Although Anambra have been said to have withdrawn, so the total number currently stands at 15. Good. Now, we heard that Soludo had withdrawn which makes the number now 15. The question now is, Nigerians, do you think that EFCC should be scrapped? Because even without knowing the details of the lawsuit, apart from the fact that Abakoba with the rest of these governors are challenging the institution and its existence, as an unconstitutional agent of government. We all know that they say EFCC is fighting financial crime. And from the news we had, as published by Chinese Television. From the news desk, top storage, Nigeria lost over $500 million to cybercrime in 2022 says EFCC. Good. Now, ask yourself, how much had the EFCC recovered from public office holders? If the government is truly fighting financial crime and not using it as a political tool to hunt down or winch hunt opposition. Do you think that anything justifies its existence? Because, just like I will always say, and it is not a justification for any cyber crime or scam, which the Nigerian youths have taken as an option since the government have made life miserable for them and have sniffed out any opportunity that could be available for them to survive. So they've up to cyber crime. Having said that, you and I know that the amount of money that have been stolen by public office holders in Nigeria, if it is put, if 20% of it or 30% of it is put into use in Nigeria, Nigeria will be a place everyone will be proud of nigeria will become a productive state nigeria will become a manufacturing state instead of an importing state our politicians will not be going to europe america asia for medical vacations and they will not be sending their children abroad to study if 20 to 30 percent of what is stolen from public fund is being recovered truly by EFCC. And I will always say that this money that has been stolen and sent abroad, stashed abroad in foreign accounts by these politicians, are being repatriated through the back door, through the back door by these 
scabbers. That is the position of so many, some people. But that is not a justification of cyber crime. Now, to you Nigerians, do you think that all will be well and fine with Nigeria if this governor succeed in scrapping out the EFCC? Let us have your opinion on this. And let us know the implication from your opinion. What will become of Nigeria if there is nothing like EFCC at all? Or do you think that that institution should be re-energized and re-strategized and depoliticized so that they can truly fight financial crime? Because this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest challenge facing Nigeria. Corruption and impunity at all levels. Financial corruption for that matter. I'm an advocate for good governance. And here we mold opinions that will better our society. I'm as such Peters, the advocate for good governance. <laughs>